All right, I'm Wes Hardiker, the last one of the day, and you all want to get to cocktails, so I'll make this quick. Um, my presentation day, so first off, I am uh, wearing only my researcher hat, and this is from the University of Southern California. It's a research project I do there. This is not speaking for the ICANN board again. Um, to understand anomalies, though, you really need to understand yourself, like what is normal? That's going to be the point of this talk. So network operators are plagued with graphs like this. There's all sorts of weird things in it. It's not smooth. Why? You always have these questions are, what are these spiky things? What is this big long thing in the middle that's going up? For those of you that have seen similar talks like this in the past that I have given, uh, both at DNSO work and uh, a research venue that, that we ran ourselves, this is different, so stay tuned. It won't be the same thing. So this is a tenfold increase to B-Root back in 2018, I think. It's from a published data set that we release um, for people that want to study it. And you really want to know what is this? So it could be a few things. It could be a DDoS attack. I think I just gave that away. So um, it could be a misconfiguration. That'd be pretty bad misconfiguration. It could be a software bug. Um, I already told you it is a DDoS attack. So we'll just go through. I was going to do a show of hands. <laughs> How do you know, right? You know, because it, it really looks pretty obvious. Anybody can diagnose these. These, these are not the hard problems. So we're going to come back to this in a minute. For now, though, let's actually look at what's in this traffic. So let's look here. Um, so the approach I'm going to do to look into this traffic blob is I'm going to look at 2 million packets. I'm going to count every protocol field and report only things that I see more than a million of, right? So more than half the packets have that value. Considering the size of that was a tenfold increase, everything that has more than half the packet should be definitely suspect. So which of all of these fields shown are, you know, the traffic in, in general? So that's too large. So let's zoom in a little bit. So let's look at just some of the answers, right? So if we zoom in, the way to read this particular account, and sorry about the text shifting in the middle, this is actually output from a tool I'm going to talk about. Uh, the left is sort of the field name. It breaks down, you know, the packet all the way into depth. You can see that there's DNS uh, stuff. I won't dive too much into what the names mean. And there's a field value in the middle um, that we're actually counting, and then the count on the right. And as you can see, all the counts are 1,990-something thousand. So it can be pretty obvious when you look into it and you just count things. That looks suspect, right? Nobody sends the same name to the root server over and over and over. Well, we hope they don't. So clearly, these are um, definitely a problem. Two million in the same name? Not, not likely. But it's not always that obvious. Sometimes it's less obvious. Like the prefix is www. Well, maybe we do get that many prefixes with www. I can tell you we don't. That's one I actually know. Um, the com, the, the public suffix list ending is com. Well, com is the most valuable your most common TLD that, to get queries. So, you know, it could be really high. That seems a little too high. And clearly an A record is still the most common queried thing these days, even though it should be quad A, but it's not. Um, so these are possible. What about the recursion desired bit? Does, does the root normally get a bunch of queries for recursion desired? Even I don't actually know the answer to that off the top of my head. I don't memorize all of the traffic we get or, or to any name server, right? Um, whether that's true. So, that doesn't work as an analysis. It works in analysis for very big bumps, not for other stuff. So let's think a little bit about how can we do this you know, analysis in a little bit more intelligent of a way, a smart way. So a little bit of an aside, but when you go to the doctor and you say, doctor, my foot hurts. He says, take off your shoes. And you take off one shoe and one sock. And he says, no, 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 take off both shoes. Why is he doing that, right? It's because he wants to do bilateral comparison. He doesn't know what your feet normally look like. He doesn't stare at them every day. So if you have two large feet, he's going to not think that that's the problem. If you have one large foot and one small foot, then he's going to go, oh, your foot's swollen. That helps him narrow it down. We don't do this enough for network traffic. 
Your doctor can't memorize what normal is, but we should figure out how to do bilateral comparison for traffic. So here's an example DDoS attack, very similar to the bump, right? Where's the problem? If left is what you normally see and right is the DDoS attack, well, clearly, you know, green is, is larger and you know exactly where the problem is. It's easy to spot these when you're diagnosing, diagnosing network data. Here's a smaller anomaly. There's actually a difference. I don't know if you can see the difference in the graph. It's hard to see. So if you were looking into one of those small bumps, how would you know which one was which? Well, one way is that you take the two circles and you make one sort of transparent and you overlay them. And when you do that, you get this. If you're really observant, you can see that there is a slight difference right down near the bottom where you can see that the graphs are actually not symmetrical. So up down there, and there's actually an even smaller one up above. If you actually take the two and you subtract them, then you get only the differences. Now it's obvious what is different between what you started with and what was in the anomaly, right? So the end result is when we remove normal from your anomaly, you're left with just the abnormal. It makes a huge improvement to, to doing network analysis. So let's go back to internet traffic again. This is from the 2023 Diddle data set at, our, at, at the USC root server's Miami instance. So you can see there's a number of weird things here. The really large spikes, we actually still get those today. There's somebody doing random queries and it's from nearest to Miami. So we only see this weird stuff at Miami, but whatever. I actually wanna look at the, at the more detailed in-depth graph. Now there's all of a sudden these stair steps, right? This is not normal. This is not more of the same thing. This is somebody doing something different. So let's look at the differences between some of these points. Um, this is much harder to do analysis wise than a gigantic DDoS attack. If you just looked through all of the data coming in at any of these points, you'd just see a bunch of random stuff. You wouldn't actually be able to just visually look at it and go, oh, it's definitely an attack with that domain name. So I wrote this tool um, to do sort of the same thing. So if we look at 2 million packets now, instead of, a, instead of just looking at 2 million packets, I'm also gonna look at 2 million packets from the left-hand side of this graph, that first line, and the right-hand side, and I'm gonna subtract the values. Now it's much easier to determine what's different. So in this particular graph, ethernet type's a hard one. For some things, I actually have the, the labels printed out that tell you that it's IPv6 versus IPv4. Um, it unfortunately doesn't do it for the ethernet type. Um, but IPv6 went up a lot. 74% of normal traffic went up. Uh, the six columns, I'm not gonna explain. If you look at Delta, it's the number that went up you know, went down for 2048 and up for, for um, 334525. Who memorizes those numbers? That's why we have names, right? That's why we're here, names. <laughs> um, looking at some other differences in all of those, there was a huge increase in stuff coming from Amazon from their ASN. So it's almost certainly somebody's project on Amazon Web Services or something. So I'm not criticizing Amazon. This is more likely their customers. I would not have spotted this nearly as easily if I looked at traffic normally, because we, because everybody gets, regardless of what type of um, DNS server you are, a resolver or a root or whatever, you get a lot of traffic from Amazon. And you wouldn't know this, that, that the increase was there until you look at the differences between what was normal and what was abnormal. There was an increase in traffic from Amazon. Um, this is another interesting one. There was a, oops a significant increase in the truncation bit. And this is actually from, because we're, this is looking at both the responses and the incoming requests. The truncation bit says, they sent us so many queries, it kicked into RRL, the rate limiting that, that most servers these days do. When you send us too many queries, I'm gonna say, come back over TCP, I no longer trust you, right? I no longer trust that you're not spoofed. Um, so it, keyed in with this. Now you do have to watch out because sometimes things do change and it's normal. There was a 100% change 
in the SOA number because the root zone rolled in between my left and my right hand side, right? Doesn't get rid of your ability to understand how traffic works, understand how the DNS works. Um, so you have to watch out for things like this. Um, so all of this was done with a tool that I created um, in the last six months called Traffic Taffy, uh, just because I thought Taffy was a cool name for a project. Um, and it does this bilateral analysis for you. Um, it works with any type of traffic. I'm sticking with DNS examples today because this is a DNS crowd, but the reality is it'll debug TCP or TLS or anything else. Um, so the approach is everything I just talked about. It does this deep packet inspection. It compares the left and right, and it counts everything it can get a hold of. Um, the, the more you tell it to go in depth, the slower it is, so you do have to watch out for that. But um, and then it sorts and filters and, and reports so that you can figure out what's in those bumps. And when they're really small, you know, you need to look for smaller and smaller deviations, of course. Um, and there's three particular tools that are um, the most useful. Dissect was the first one that just counts. It doesn't try and do comparisons. The second one is Taffy Compare that actually does comparisons of a left bump and a right bump. Uh, I call them left and right, they're, they're arbitrary names. And then there's a graphing one that actually the graph, the, the initial um, graphs came from that as well. It's really easy to install, it's based in Python, so you can use pip install to install it. Um, it is beta software. For those that went to DNS work, it was labeled alpha then. I'm actually getting close to wrapping, wrapping up sort of and releasing really the 1.0, it's really, really close. Uh, I'd hope to do it by now and then I got life got in the way. Um, so please do test it. The documentation has a lot of information on it, and it also has a link to the DNS OARC presentation where I actually dive into how to use it, not just, you know, what its intent is like I did here. Um, so you might watch the video. It's linked on the, on the web page. Um, very easy to use, and I want to thank greatly the Comcast Innovation Fund, which is actually really what sponsored this um, project and allowed me to spend an awful lot of time in, this, in the last six months to, or more uh, working on it. Uh, with that, any questions? Otherwise, it's almost cocktail time. All right. Give it a whirl. Do write me if you have any questions. Um, and if you have interesting, you know, data, interesting bumps or anomalies in recorded traffic you want to take a look at and want help, do write me. I would love to work with you to, you know, uh, see see what I can see with it too and, and uh, see, how, see how I can help you out. All right. Thanks very much.